The Farms.com Canola Report is brought to you by the Clearfield Production System for Canola and BASF Canada. Keith Gobbert here with the Canola Council of Canada. I'm an agronomy specialist out of South Central Alberta. Here this morning to talk to you about stand establishment or getting your canola crop off to a good start. And, and it all boils down to probably variety selection and the condition of the field that you're in. So growers for the most part when I talk to them uh, are, are usually this time of year, we're, we're talking at AgriTrade here in November, they're making seeding plans already and they're buying the amount of seed that they expect to use and they're not necessarily thinking about specific fields that they're going to be seeding or even seeding conditions that are happening next year. So success at seeding probably for the most part starts with trash management at harvest and stubble, whatever sort of stubble management or tillage that you're, you're involved in, but getting that field ready and in seedbed conditions for the following spring. And in most of my territory, it's fairly important to have that seedbed in pretty good condition before spring comes around in case we're looking at a dry spring. And I suspect that'll be a top of mind for producers this year a little more in 2016 than it was in 2015 because we've come through uh, maybe a wet fall, but we came through a fairly dry period up through uh, from seeding through to July. So we'll probably have moisture management as one of the concerns that growers would have. But success with canola really boils down to trying to match your equipment and your seeding rate with all the other aspects that it takes to get the crop off to a good start. So we've talked about uh, the right seeding rate. The Canola Council has talked for years about the ideal stand and we've generally said something like 7 to 14 plants per square foot and very few fields that I walk over the course of the summer would be at 7 to 14 plants per square foot. So realistically we really want to make sure that growers are at 5 or above and that they're evenly spaced across that field. So an average of 5 probably isn't what we're looking for. We need a nice uniform stand of 5 plants or more to be able to reach what we think is close to your maximum yield potential. And the more uniform stand you have and the thicker that is into that 7 to 10 range the better off you're likely going to be. How do you do that? Well if you do the math we'll tell you that stand establishment numbers or emergence numbers range from somewhere between about 25 percent and about 90 percent and most growers don't like to hear it but the average is somewhere in that 50 to 60 to range so if you take a standard seed lot which would be usually five grams per thousand kernel weight um, and you say that 50 percent is a reasonable average to, to use when you're talking about seeding in December because you really don't know what conditions you're going to work with you get just over five plants per square foot so doing the math on most of the seed lots that we use in Western Canada would tell us that very few of us are going to be over five plants per square foot. So if you're not going to increase your seeding rate, which is the first obvious way to increase your plant stand, then you have to start doing other management tools that might assist you in getting that crop off to a good start. So a 20 year old message from the Canola Council, slow down. Speed of seeding really impacts your success of getting those that crop off to a good start. Seeding shallow. Now that'll vary from field to field, but typically we'd like to see canola at half an inch to an inch deep. Uh, seeding into moisture obviously is maybe a little more important than, than seeding by the book. You need to be looking at your seeding job and deciding is there a way to improve that. Um, the other thing that we see producers maybe uh, trying to to gain some efficiencies at is with a one pass seeding operation often we've got a little more seed place fertilizer than we consider safe so I, in an ideal world we'd be looking depending on your opener somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 pounds as, as being a safe rate of phosphate fertilizer 1152 to put with the seed and anything over that likely needs to be put somewhere else uh, with your seeding tool or or perhaps even on a different year you could put a little more phosphate down with cereals than you can with canola. Uh, but one of the tips that we would maybe talk to producers about is to shut off your seed place fertilizer. Don't uh, uh, don't just seed 160 acres at a time with, with the same rate, the same placement. If you think that you're a little high on your seed place fertilizer, the best way to figure it out is to shut it off for 10 or 15 seconds. Make sure you remember to turn it back on or you really won't like that advice from a canola council agronomist. But if you shut it off briefly, and that portion of the crop looks uh, better than the rest of your field, you know that you're seeing a little bit of uh, fertilizer burn from your seed place fertilizer. So pretty easy, simple trick. Shut that seed place fertilizer off a couple times over the course of the year. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, shut it off somewhere where you're going to see it. Probably uh, <laughs> 
probably you don't want the neighbors to see it, but I would advise it somewhere where you're going to see it from the road. And if you notice the first four weeks of that crop's life that, uh, that no fertilizer looks better than with fertilizer, you're obviously pushing seed place fertilizer a little too much. Other things that you might consider, obviously at that point you've already made variety, uh, variety decisions. There's a number of disease considerations and things that you should consider in your rotation that would dictate what varieties you're going to grow. It's a really good realization for a grower to, to realize that he, he in many ways is setting his whole year's yield potential the day that he seeds. So if you do a poor job of seeding, it's really hard to improve your crop after that. So uh, this past year coming out of 2015 we had a lot of stands that were thin, that were patchy, that could have benefited probably from a little more attention on that day of seeding. So you know the extra hour that it might take to slow down or to stop and check depth a few more times is really time well spent. The other thing that a, a grower might want to consider is if you're going to pick a seeding rate and whether I talk about thousand kernel weight or, or however you decide your seeding rate the one improvement over most of our practices that you would be able to do is that you don't need to have the same seeding rate from day one through to day 14 of seeding. If you know that you're starting a little on the early side or you have a few fields with lots of trash, maybe on those fields you increase your seeding rate by half a pound or a pound or, or whatever the amount you think might be reasonable. And if you have some fields that have fantastic uh, soil seedbed conditions, maybe you steal that half a pound or that pound back. And, and I'd say you'd probably see really big rewards from tailoring your seeding rate. You can still average 4.2 or 5.5 or whatever the average number you would have liked from the year before, but you probably see better results if you actually decide where you change your seeding rate by half a pound or a pound. The closing messages for, for success at seeding would be probably some fairly simple ones that we've repeated year after year after year. Uh, so slow down, shallow up. It doesn't apply to every grower, but it applies to far more growers than you'd believe after we've given that message for years. The other thing is choose an appropriate seeding rate. We'd really like to see that you start to count plants. Rather than telling us that uh, that you, you think you have five plants per square foot, at some time around swathing time that you've actually counted. Because there's no sense changing your seeding tool, your seeding plans, if you had don't have some some hard evidence there and the other thing is if you're looking for more information on canola agronomics one of the great places to go look is at our website or at the canola encyclopedia so feel free to uh, ask your local agronomist or, or go online to find more information the farms.com canola report has been brought to you by the clearfield production system for canola and basf canada visit www.agsolutions.ca